Blumhouse Productions is a company known for producing low-budget films with huge profit margins. An extreme example of this strategy is Paranormal Activity, which had a budget of just $15,000 but grossed almost $200 million worldwide. Blumhouse has continued with their strategy ever since and is now a household name in the horror genre with titles such as Insidious, Happy Death Day, Get Out, and most recently Halloween, and their impressive lineup of commercially successful movies. In 2013, Blumhouse released their biggest hit yet, The Purge. It was a huge box office success and even found its way into pop culture. I know what this is. You've been able to sustain world peace because you have one night a year where you all run around robbing and murdering each other without consequence. That's right. What? It's like The Purge, Morty. That, that movie, The Purge. Since then, four Purge movies and a TV show have been made, totaling over half a billion dollars in profits for Blumhouse. I think the popularity of these films stem entirely from James DeMonico's genius premise. One night a year, all crime, especially murder, becomes legal and citizens are encouraged to release the beast. If you don't deliver him by the aforementioned time, we'll release the beast on him. And on you. Release the beast. I'm gonna release the beast! Release the beast, boys! Let the killing commence! The government has urged the public to engage in criminal behavior as a form of catharsis, leaving the remaining 364 days of the year relatively crime-free. This premise allows for scenarios that are as brutal as they are entertaining, and practically begs the question to its audience, what would you do if the purge was real? Luckily for you, I am here to answer that question for you. I have studied the ancient manuscripts, and I have practiced state-of-the-art murdering technology. I even scoured the most vile and disgusting places on the internet for information. After six decades of research, I created a list of five ways to beat the purge. Four of these cover how to survive the purge, and the last will reveal how to eliminate the purge once and for all. The purge runs for 12 hours from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. on the night of March 21st. During these 12 hours, all crime, including murder, is legal. During the purge, class 4 weapons and below are authorized for use. Somebody wants to kill me! What the fuck is it? What the fuck are those? So what exactly qualifies as a class 4 weapon or below? In the real world, this gets very, very complicated. Because firearm classification as defined by federal legislation depends heavily on what specific law or regulation you're talking about. The short answer, however, is that the four or more weapon classes that the purge refers to do not exist. Federal legislation very generally places weapons into eight categories, but the categories have nothing to do with how destructive a weapon is. Weapons are not grouped by how much damage they cause, but instead by what similarities they share. Machine guns, for example, is one category. All weapons in this category can fire multiple projectiles with a single action of the trigger. Another category is shotguns. A third is weapons made out of shotguns, such as sawed-off shotguns. My favorite category by far Far, however, is any other weapon, which is meant to classify disguised weapons such as umbrella guns, guns concealed as pens, or my personal favorite, knife guns. I mean, why would you disguise a weapon as another weapon? Look out, he's got a knife! No, wait, he's got a gun? Either, either way, arrest that, arrest that guy. The point is, these categories are not a sliding scale of destructive capability, and are clearly not what the Purge was basing its class system on. If it were, the Purge would only allow rifles, pistols, and shotgun variants, but would not allow things like antique firearms, relic weapons, and much to my disappointment, knife guns. Since these weapon classes are not based on real life, the next step was to look at what was said by the director or the writers about what the weapon classes are. And fortunately, that is the same person for for all four movies, James DeMonaco. Well, almost. He didn't direct the first Purge, which is not the same as the first Purge movie. The first Purge is actually the last Purge movie, but the first movie is called The Purge. Unfortunately, DeMonaco never mentions the weapon classes in interviews he gave for the Purge movies. But if I missed something and there's some hidden interview somewhere, like on a DVD featurette or something, please tell me about it in the comments. And throw out your DVD player, because real movie fans know that the best 
best movie quality can only be attained on vinyl, okay? All of this leads me to believe that the statement about the weapon classes has no strict definition at all, and was just put in the script to sound cool. But at the very least, we can use the films themselves as guidelines for what is and what is not defined as a class 4 weapon or lower. What we know for certain that is allowed during the purge is handheld weapons such as machetes, knives, needle, fists, exploding teddy bears, really? Oh, and guns. Lots and lots of guns. The third rule of the purge is that government officials of ranking 10 are granted immunity from the purge and shall not be harmed. Again, just like the weapon classes, there is no such ranking system in the real world. The closest analog to rank 10 government officials in real life are the senior executive service positions. These are the highest held government office positions that are hired rather than elected. The senior executive service is the most likely line to draw as everyone above it would be extremely difficult to replace and losing them would be devastating to the functioning of the federal government. So those are the official rules of the purge, but there is one more condition to consider. The purge was sold to the public as a way to reduce crime by giving the public one night a year where they can purge all the criminal feelings they have, such as elaborate murder, theft, elaborate murder, kidnapping, elaborate murder, or you know, elaborate murder. However, the real purpose of the purge is to eliminate the poor in order to decrease government spending because the poorest Americans are the largest burden on taxpayers each year. In the real world, over a trillion dollars or 20% of the federal government's 2018 budget was spent on Medicaid and social welfare programs. If the people who depended on these programs were eliminated, the government would stand to gain a trillion dollars every year since the poor can't afford to defend themselves the way wealthy people can, they end up being the only victims of the purge. Unfortunately, not nearly enough poor people were dying in order for this to work, so the government began to covertly murder its own citizens. They target the poorest areas of major cities and methodically slaughter civilians one apartment building at a time. So the unofficial rule of the purge is that there are roaming battalions of the military killing off as many people as they can. So with the rules of the purge out of the way, here are some some general tips for beating the purge before we get into the elaborate solutions. One. Don't purge. First of all, going out to commit a crime, especially to maim and murder, only invites unnecessary risk and the potential for you to get murdered in turn. In the original movie, a gang of private school kids break into the family's home with the intent to kill them and are partly successful, but they get murdered right back by the family and their neighbors. In the second film, a group of wealthy purge enthusiasts trap the protagonist in an arena with nothing to defend themselves so that the players can hunt them down for sport without any risk of danger to themselves. This backfires. In the third film, a group of kids who wants to steal a guy's candy bar because reasons. I got a wicked sweet tooth tonight and I want my candy bar. On second thought, these movies are actually not very good. <laughs> Holy shit! Is that Bubba from Forrest Gump? It is Bubba from Forrest Gump! Okay, I'm warming up to this movie a little bit. <laughs> my negro. I've made a huge mistake. Right, oh, so in the third film, a group of kids try to murder a shop owner and in turn get murdered themselves. It never works out for those who purge. The only exception being Lakeith Stanfield, because where others before him were killed, he was able to get out. Hello, and it's time to play everyone's favorite game show, What Is This Old Man Thinking About? <laughs> is it A, He's thinking about his late wife. B, he's going to try and figure out what he's doing on purge night. Or C, he's thinking about, I don't know, waffles and pussy. <laughs> Find out after these messages. And the answer is... I'm thinking about waffles and pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
If you absolutely must purge, wear a mask. Wearing a mask not only keeps you on fleek on purge night, but hiding your identity is paramount for the day after the purge. If your coworkers, neighbors, or loved ones find out that you went on a killing spree during the purge, legal or not, they will probably not want to associate with you anymore. There's no danger of going to prison, but there is a real danger of social exile. So wear a mask. Number three. The original Purge movie showed us that if someone wants to kill you, even if you have a powerful security system, there's virtually no way to stop someone from breaking into your home if they're determined enough. At best, security systems serve as deterrents in order to convince your would-be murderers that it really would be a lot easier to go kill someone else. The problem is, statistically speaking at least, the person most likely to murder you is someone you already know. 55% of all murders are committed by spouses, partners, affiliates, or ex-lovers. The people most likely to kill you know where you live and are really only interested in killing you specifically. They are not likely to be deterred by a security system. So don't stay home because that's the first place they'll look. Avoid major cities. Areas that have a lot of people not only increase your chances of running into murder tourists, which are a thing for some reason, but you could also come across a government death squad. So why would you go there during the purge? And now for our feature presentation, here are the five solutions for beating the purge. Okay, so what if your goal is to just survive the purge? The best way for surviving depends on your level of income, and in these films we have some protagonists that are very wealthy and others that are extremely poor. With this in mind, I have devised four different solutions for four different levels of income, starting with someone who is as rich as the family from the first film and ending with someone who is as poor as the homeless guy they saved. Lastly, I may have a solution for how to safely purge and get away with it and in the process stop the purge from happening altogether. So if you're wealthy, the solution for beating the purge is stupid easy. Leave the country. There is no rule stipulating that the borders are closed during the purge. Nor is there any stipulation that citizens need to be stateside during. In fact, some tourists actually enter the country hoping to experience the purge for themselves. So why not just leave? If you're wealthy, you can go on holiday when the purge occurs. You can go to Fiji, Egypt, Hawaii. Actually, don't go to Hawaii, they're purging there. You could, however, go to Iceland. While others are wondering whether their ex-wife who they cheated on is about to bust down their front door with a Halmatro door blaster, which exists for some reason, and slice their goddamn head off with one of the 273 surrendered weapons from the hit show Forged in Fire, which is on the History Channel, even though it has nothing to do with history. And speaking of, why do they have a show about truckers driving on the ice? because not only does it have nothing to do with history, it's also the least interesting show I've ever seen. And it is 11 goddamn seasons. Like how can a show about ice road truckers on the goddamn History Channel have 11 seasons when Firefly only got one season? One, and we get 11 seasons of ice road truckers on the fucking History Channel? Are you fucking kidding me? You could instead be going on a tour of Game of Thrones in Reykjavik. I was able to book a trip from Omaha, Idaho, a middle point in the country, to Reykjavik, Iceland for a two-week period during the purge for only $1,700 a person, which includes the flight and the hotel. Flights to Iceland are remarkably cheap. Food, however, is quite expensive, so I added another $300 per week in food costs, making for an estimated total of $2,300 per year. This is by far and away the best solution if you can afford it. The only problem with this strategy is that a lot of people are going to have the same idea. Purge season will become busier than Christmas Eve, which means that as the night of the purge gets closer, there's a real danger of being trapped in the country due to traffic and delayed flights. So to avoid that, the earlier you leave the country, the better. Make it at least a two week vacation and leave at least a week before the purge. That way you minimize your risk of getting trapped in the country. 
country. Another option might be to drive across the border to Canada or Mexico, but again there is a serious risk of getting stuck in a wall of traffic as those who can't afford to fly attempt a mass exodus out of the country. I would not consider driving to be a reliable solution unless you drove across the border weeks ahead of time. But for those who can't afford to fly or take time off work, what's the best option? A cheaper option, at least in the long term, would be to buy a boat. And here's why. The mainland United States has over 125,000 lakes, which means that on average there is one lake per 25 square miles. On top of that, the US also has 12,000 miles of ocean coastline. That is a lot of usable water. If you were to spend your purge on a boat, you would be significantly more difficult to reach than someone who's, say, not on a boat. Only 1 in 10 people in the US even own a boat, which means that only 10% of the population can actually reach you. If you live near the ocean, and most people do, you can drive your boat several kilometers offshore, turn off your lights, and wait out the 12 hours. Since most of the purge is at night, you'll be in the dark with no sources of light to illuminate you. The chances of anyone coming across you are almost zero. If you're too far inland to reach the ocean, you can use a lake. You would want to use a lake as large as possible in order to get as far away from the shore as you can, thus reducing the risk of sniper attack. Luckily, over 100 lakes in the US have over 50 square miles of surface area. If someone who owns a boat happens to come across you and wants to kill you, consider picking up the Ruger Precision Long Range Rifle, which is designed to be deadly even at a range of 1,000 yards and uses a Creedmoor 6.5mm cartridge that some have described as so accurate it's boring when used at long range to be used as a last resort, of course. The good news is that boats make a lot of noise and that noise travels far on the water. So if someone starts to get close, you'll hear them coming long before you see them, allowing you to line up your shot well in advance of their approach. So the procedure on purge night would be to drive to the lake or the ocean a few hours before the purge, set off, turn off your lights, and then hunker down for the 12 hours. In the very unlikely event that someone in another boat finds you and approaches you, take aim with your Ruger and and shoot with accuracy before they're in range to respond. And when you leave your house on purge night, make sure you don't tell anyone where you're going or what you're doing, and every year go to a different spot or place. This minimizes the chances of someone you know, such as an ex-wife or disgruntled coworker, from tracking you down. The biggest downside to this plan is the upfront cost. Just like cars, boats can range from a few hundred dollars to a few million, but you should be able to find a decent 17-foot boat and trailer, which will handle most wave conditions in the three to five thousand dollar range. The Ruger will set you back another 1700. While this is a lot of upfront cost, it shouldn't be outside the realm of affordability for someone in the middle class, which is what the solution was geared towards. In any case, it becomes more cost effective than the previous solution in just three years. The other downside is that if there is a large storm occurring during the purge, you are going to have a very rough time on the water. In that case, I would just avoid the ocean entirely and stick to a smaller lake. Drop anchor and wait it out. If vacationing outside the country isn't affordable to you or you can't get time off work, a boat might just be the best thing to keep you alive during the purge. If you can't afford a boat and are scraping the poverty line, then what you need instead is a budget solution to staying alive during the purge that won't break the bank. My advice? The forest. The cheaper option to flying out of the country or buying a boat is to park your car and walk straight into the forest for the night. The forest blocks line of sight, keeping you entirely hidden and it also muffles any sounds. Drive to your nearest forest, walk into the woods, and then sit there and wait until the 12 hours are up. The chances of anyone finding you are almost zero. Some things you may want to bring with you are warm clothes and a tarp, as the purge happens in March, and maybe a GPS device to help you get back to your car in the event you get lost. The Magellan Explorers 310 is a bargain at $160, but you absolutely do not want to bring a tent and a sleeping bag, because in the unlikely scenario that someone does find you, you want to be able to see them coming, and you definitely don't want to be asleep. Since this is a budget solution, pick up the Cobra Arms Freedom 380 handgun, which is the cheapest gun on the market at $127. It probably isn't very durable or as accurate as its more expensive rivals, but it's lightweight, which makes it easy to carry, and it has very little recoil, and hopefully you'll never have to use it anyways. And since you're trekking into the wilderness, 
awareness, bringing a gun in case you run into a bear or a cougar might not be a bad idea. Not that a handgun is going to stop a bear, but hey, at least you'll piss it off a little bit before it flays you alive, DiCaprio style. Reboot will return after these messages. We now return to Reboot. There are, unfortunately, some significant downsides to this solution. While there may be 1.1 million square miles of forests in the United States, most of those miles are distributed along the coastlines, which means that the middle states, such as Nebraska or the Dakotas, have almost no forests at all. If you live in these states and get off work at 3 or 4 p.m., there probably isn't enough time to get to a forest before the purge begins. In this scenario, you may be able to substitute forests for areas of tall grass, rocky outcrops, or anywhere else you can't be readily seen while also avoiding populated areas areas. The other problem is that if someone sees your car on the side of the road, it essentially tells them that there is someone within walking distance. A truly skilled person may be able to track you down simply by using your car as a starting point. Ever watch Man Tracker? Imagine Terry Grant tracking you down during the purge and saying, Pretty much buggered, ain't you? Right before he shoots your face off and feeds you to his horse. Though to be honest, if that chiseled jawline is the last thing I saw before I died, I would leave this earthly plane with no regrets. The chances of someone tracking you down in the wilderness is highly unlikely, but if your life is on the line, it's something worth considering. If this happens, you will have your gun as a last resort. This is not the best solution on this list, but it is one of the cheapest. And if you're forced to live through the purge on a budget, sitting in the forest may be your best option. But if you have absolutely no money whatsoever, you're homeless, and you live in a highly populated area, well, good news, because I have just the solution for you. It's called a dumpster. If you have absolutely no other other option, hiding in plain sight is a very reasonable consideration. In fact, the main characters of the second film almost hide in a dumpster themselves, but that particular dumpster had a dead guy in it, so they just got turned off of the whole idea together. If they had simply gotten into the next dumpster and hid there for the rest of the night, they would have been completely fine. The point is, unless someone specifically sees you going into a dumpster or hears you inside as they walk by, there is no reason for anyone to open it. Instead of getting inside a dumpster, this guy ends up going on a crazy adventure throughout the city and ends up up getting killed. He in fact would have been a lot better off in the dumpster. Obviously there are risks here. If someone opens the dumpster and wants to kill you, you will be at their mercy. But the chances of that happening are very slim and it's a lot better than being on the street. If I had no money at all, I pick dumpster. And finally, the last solution on this list is how to beat the purge once and for all. And the answer is doing your taxes. During the purge, all crime, including murder, is legal. But murder is probably the least creative way to spend your 12 hours. First of all, you could actually do your taxes during the purge. You can file taxes online, which means you can file them at any hour of the day, and you may do so between January 1st and April 15th. The purge takes place on the evening of March 21st, so it falls within this time period. Secondly, your federal income tax return has a section known as Schedule A, or itemized deductions. These reduce your federal income tax if you have medical expenses, donations to charity, business expenses, whether you have student loans, and many other factors. There are also exemptions for how many children or dependents you have. So because it's the purge, you can just lie. You can lie on everything. All crime is now legal, including lying on your tax return. Whatever you put on this form is legal. This means that you can maximize all those deductions and exemptions until your federal income tax is zero. If you worked in the past year, the chunk of your paycheck that was set aside for income tax will be sent back to you. If you do this every single year, you will never have to pay taxes again. But here's the best part. Remember how the whole purpose of the purge was to save money by killing off all the poor people? If everyone files fraudulent tax returns during the purge, then no federal income tax will be collected and the federal government won't have any money at all. The government would be forced to end the purge. Its entire purpose is to save the government money. And if it starts to lose the government money, then the purge will be scrapped. That's how you beat the purge. You don't murder, you don't assassinate or steal. All you have to do is file your tax return. But if I have missed something, or if I made a mistake, or if you think you have an even better way to beat the purge, let us all know about it in the comments. 
Don't keep that knowledge to yourself, you selfish bastard. If the purge ever happens, your comment could save a life, okay? YouTube comments save lives. A big, big thank you to Tree Shaker, Tucker, Rachel, Lily, and Seth Miller, who are currently my only patrons. And if you want to be as cool as them, head over to patreon.com slash filmherald. The merchandise store is now up and running too, so if you want to get a shirt with a dumb monster on it, go check that out in the link below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald.